I, I, I started a podcast in, like I said, with Doug in 2010. Uh, and then after two years of doing it, we just totally got away from doing it. It wasn't a priority and it was a pain. And then I decided, you know, podcasts are coming back or they're exploding actually. And I wanted to do one. So I announced like a year ago, I was going to do one. And then I started committing myself to some other projects and I just didn't feel right with the clients that I work with that I launched this thing until I complete some other projects. So I have actually five podcasts recorded um, and I'm going to launch them. Uh, God, I hope really, really soon. And I'm looking forward to doing my own podcasts. Uh, what's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Brad and Kyle podcast. Thank you guys so much. We got our great friend here, Mr. Mike Flanagan. Flanagan. This is the, you, can, you can say something if you want. <laughs> hey, it's great not having to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time ever I haven't had to do anything when right. it comes to the hooking up this crap. You just, yeah, you just show up, sit down, put the headset on, and we're good. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> all right, guys. Before we get started, I want to give a huge shout-out to some people that support us on Patreon. Uh, these are the guys that uh, show us some love on here. It's another Patreon's another site where we kind of give tips, other content, uh, and just kind of interact with our audience. So I want to thank uh, Brian Blankenship, Justin Petray, Camden Cook, David Dow. Kirk Fox. Uh, Kirk Vox. Kirk Vox. Uh, <laughs> Do you know who that is, Mike? Mm-mm. Actually, no, Kirk Vox. What's up, What's up Kirk Vox? Okay, okay, a couple more. Dan Bays, Jason Bardo, Tom McLaughlin, Eric Moore, and Thomas Keller. Thank you guys so much for supporting us on Patreon. A few shout-outs there. Yeah, absolutely. So let's get going. All right, so Mike. Yeah, I'm the guest. How are you, man? You are the guest. This I'm, doesn't I'm, feel like you're the guest. No, I know. <laughs> it's 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 crazy. Are you tired um, yet? No, I'm all right. I'm all right. Really? Yep. Yep. All right, so for those of you who don't know, Mike, we are currently at the World Series of Bowling, and Mike is here for his work, for his job. Uh, mm-hmm. He has to be here all week. So so tell the audience a little bit about why you're here. What do you do? What, what's your job? Well, the first thing is anybody that's watching, and we got all these cameras in here, so I don't know where to look, but... <laughs> So I'm just gonna look at you guys. Yeah, yeah just look please. at us. Uh, <laughs> the first thing is, is, uh, is y- you want to stick around for this one. I know I'm not a bowler, but I mean, we're gonna get into some stuff here. So, <laughs> uh, so anyway, um, yeah, I'm here uh, handling uh, social media responsibilities for Ebony International, all four of their brands. Uh, my company also handles the PBA social media. Most of that's being done remotely, uh, but I am helping a little bit with that while I'm here. Um, and then uh, just taking care of all the other stuff that I have going on, which is a plethora of things. And I don't want to bore the people at home, but let's just say I have a lot going on all the time. And, and I talk to these two turkeys quite quite often uh, throughout the week over the last year or so with what they're doing and try to offer any sort of expertise or things that I've learned uh, to these guys so that they can uh, provide better uh, value to the subscribers. Yeah, and we actually stayed in the same house this week. Which is yeah. the first time we've ever done that, and I've had a blast. I mean, honestly, yeah, it's, it's been, been it's a been lot good. of fun. It's been hectic. We've our work schedule has been kind of crazy. We haven't had as much time to just chill out and no. talk and, and you know uh, bounce around ideas. But uh, the the workflow this week is our schedule this week has been insane for the World Series. I mean, yeah, we've been has. what's our our day looks like? Uh, getting up around nine, getting ready, bowl from ten to. 6 7 p.m try to get some food get all this footage together that we uh, vlogged with during the day and then making a video anywhere between what is it 10 a.m to uh, you guys stayed up till four last night making a video uh just no just hanging out we didn't make anything last or night we, night before two, two, nights, two nights ago two nights ago, two nights ago. Two nights ago. Yeah, yeah. i was up till ago. six two nights yeah. ago. two nights ago so. six so yeah. six a.m making this video yeah. so our workload's been pretty crazy and then, but meanwhile mike's kind of doing on the same schedule he's got to be there at the beginning of each squad because he's got bowlers he needs to film and he's got to make content for the ebonite brands and and all that so your your schedule is just as busy as ours yeah really. when, I, when i'm out working in the field i i'm i'm there for every ball um that's thrown and then I'm typically there to interview players after the blocks. And then I put together a video. I go grab something to eat. And then I come back for the next squad. Um, it's just kind of what I do. I also need to say I have a, a large team. I have five people I work with. So it's just not all me. One of them is Corey, who also came in a little bit later, three days into the event. And he stayed here too. So. And you mentioned your company runs the social media. Yeah. What did it Tell your audience your company. Yeah, Inside Bowling. If you go to InsideBowling.com, right now it's a merch store. I don't even have anything on my website right now that says that we do with all this stuff. Right. But uh, 
Well, we just we just uh, we just had another thing that we did. We did the new Hammer website. So if yeah. you go over to HammerBowling.com, you can check out that website. Uh, my company yeah, took that good. together, you know. And I say my and I and stuff like that. And I'm not a big my I guy, but um, we collaborated with with Ebony International. It was a true collaboration. Uh, they helped with some things. We helped with some things, but. I like to typically say, hey, we're going to start doing this, and I kind of lead the project, annoy everybody to the point that everybody's like, all right, well, I guess we're doing this, and then I just make people do work, and then hopefully they, when it's done, they're proud of the work, and yeah, they still want to work with me, you know? I kind of want to go back to when I first met you, actually, and that's because I, I have the t-shirt. I was the first, one of the first hundred members of 300. Inside... 300? Yeah, it was 300. It was, and it, when Inside Bowling first started, uh -huh. it was just a website with a forum. And I remember walking into Crest Bowl and you want to do some live streaming. And so we actually fired up some like trash talking on your forum and trying to get some action matches going. And then you had me and Eddie Setwinski commentating on these uh -huh. action matches for like a hundred or two hundred dollars a game. And that's kinda how it started. And it was amazing. Like these conversations we used to have on this forum were great. We talked about everything. There was shit talking. There was uh oh, yeah. people challenging each other. But you were you were on as an alias, and Facebook wasn't as big then. No, I mean it was there, yeah, but it, it was wasn't there. it wasn't the way of the world. Right. Where you know our phone tells us how much time we were on it this week. You know. Right. Um, and I don't even know if I've even told you guys like kind of how the whole original inside bowling thing started. Have I ever told you that? No. You and Doug, right? Or no? Was it even before that? <sighs> so I've always had all these ideas of things I wanted to do, but I was running a bowling center. Whether if it was for Brunswick or AMF or Independence, it, it just didn't matter. I, I just was always running a bowling center, and that was what I was going to do. And I always had these ideas of different things that could happen. Oh, people should be doing it this way, but then I would never go execute it, right? I mean, everybody's got ideas. Yeah. Everybody has opinions. Um, we all do. Some more than most. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No kidding. <laughs> That's true. But ex execution <laughs> was something I, I wasn't very good at. Yeah. I could execute things inside of a bowling center where I was comfortable and things like that, but I'd always have all these ideas. And um, I found out one day, uh, working at the bowling center that I was for so long, there was, there was an older owner there. And we had grown revenue really well. Things were going good. But he was getting really old. And he listed the bowling center for sale. And I didn't know about it. And I thought he was maybe going to eventually sell it to me or whatever. But I came across that the bowling center was for sale. And I said, man, I got I to gotta figure out something that's going to happen. And it all kind of happened like subconsciously. So I was talking to Doug Lakey and just some other people about my ideas. And, and one person said, hey, you know, you should start up, you know, a message board again. Because there was one years ago, this, a guy by the name of Steve Solovic started, he and I did together, which was uh, fantasymastersleague.com, just for the Masters League. And then people would talk <laughs> crap in there about who sucks in the Masters League in St. Louis, you know, and stuff like that. I mean, it's so stupid. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm like, okay, so I'm going to start this website. And I want a message board. And the idea I had was if I could get all these St. Louis bowlers going to one place to, to talk to each other on a message board, I would be able to floor leagues. I would be able to have control over the whole market. So if somebody bought the bowling center that I was in and I, they said, hey, we don't need to keep your large salary because I was paid pretty good there. I mean, I really grew the revenue, helped save the bowling center, that I would have all the influence in the market. And I would be the number one free agent. Man, if we could get the guy that has this website, our bowling center will fill up. So that was kind of the idea behind Inside Bowling, which is a message board. So I placed an ad on Craigslist looking for someone that could build me a message board that was more customizable. And I got these two nerds, guys that have never built websites before, but they were starting a website company, and they charged me $250. And they went out and basically <laughs> just took like some <laughs> sort of like available forum, and they knew how to go in and manipulate the code a little bit. And I said, I need a name for this. And in St. Louis, there was a show called uh, Inside STL, InsideSTL.com, yeah, yeah. Tim McKern and these guys. And I just liked Inside Bowling. So I registered Inside Bowling, and these guys made this, uh, made this website for me. And it, it went live August 26, 2010. And when we did it, I just all of a sudden had all these people start signing up because it was like the old Fantasy Masters League. And all these people just started going on there talking about bowling and creating fake names and ripping on people. And then I, I found out very shortly after that that the next summer, which was in uh, in like April-ish, uh, my bowling center was, was uh, extremely uh, slow on Thursday nights. We had no league. So I decided I was going to start a big money league on Thursday nights, a mixed league, and I got Hooters to sponsor it. And we floored a 30 team by four people, 120 bowlers, all because of this website. I was like, man, it was, I knew at that point in time that I had something. 
I had influence over the St. Louis market. Yeah, yeah you and did. Now, and now you've and you've not only taken that to the company that you have now, but at one time you're running one of the most successful amateur tournaments in the country with your inside bowling dot com tournament. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean that was how many people did you get to come to that tournament? You have multiple <laughs> squads? Well, the first year, you know, um I mean there's so many things we could talk about this forever, but we ended up doing a podcast. Yeah. I mean in two thousand and 11 we did a podcast in 2011 we had the first ib open that we i just said on the podcast we need to have a tournament in st louis on a hard pattern that'll attract people all over the united states and everybody said good luck yeah it's been tried before if, it, if for those of you who don't know anything about yeah, st. Go louis, into that. st louis bowling it is uh it's very nostalgic but the culture is kind of taking a turn to where they don't the People really only like to bowl on very easy shots. So getting anyone to bowl on difficult patterns in St. Louis um, is is a hard thing to do. And that's why you're probably getting a lot of criticism from trying to build this spectacular event on a hard pattern in St. Louis. Yeah. Yeah. And just people told me it wasn't going to work. And Yeah. So I put together this flyer. I put it on Facebook. I put it on Inside Bowling. And I said that um, I said, you know, hey, we're gonna have this tournament. It's gonna pay seven thousand dollars first place. And 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 I I broke a rule, you know, these tournament organizers, and I rip on them now, but I did it too. Seven thousand dollars guaranteed, based on entries. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, because that's it. That's that's like saying it's black but it's white. Yeah, you know, yeah, like it's, yeah, it's yeah. complete opposite. Right. You're not supposed to do that. But I did. And we had 91 entries the first year, and the entry fee I think was like 195 dollars or something like that. Tom Hess was there. PJ Haggerty came in. A guy by the name of Harvey Johnson brought some people and was on board with it. So, uh, so yeah, we uh, we had that tournament the first year. Kyle, you bowled it. I you did. Crossed, you crossed with Jeff Riggles. I yep. remember that. Uh, Pete Weber bowled, and not only that, but Pete Weber. I called all the news stations, and we were on uh, two. We were on the Fox and the NBC affiliate in St. Louis promoting the tournament. We got on TV, all this different stuff. We had them there in the morning promoting the event. I had custom masking units from the Gray Eagle distributing uh, across the entire place. Chris and Linda Barnes, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. We raised some money for them. I called them. I got some donated items. Uh, I just had, did all this crazy stuff. Um, and we just said we were going to do it, and we did it. 91 entries. The next year was 117. The bowling center sold. I wanted to take it to a bigger center. I took it to Tropicana. We exploded to 295 entries. Yes. And then we got to like 315. And then years five, six, and seven, it, it went down. And I think the last year we ended at like 215. And at that point in time, I said, I don't want to do this anymore. It's declined for three years. I became more popular in the industry. So I wasn't appealing to the donators anymore. I mean, I had EJ Tackett showing up. I yeah. had you guys showing up. I had... You know, Liz Johnson bowled yeah. all the time. I had, you know, I, Anthony Simons, yeah. <laughs> I mean, BJ Moore. I mean, uh, the, the champions of that event, Jake Peters, and then he went on to win a PBA title three months later. Uh, the second year was Danny Spink, who was uh, the lo well, one local guy that won it. Yeah. Uh, and Which then, is no schmuck. I mean, no, former no. Team USA member, standout at LU. Right. The third year was Bill O'Neill. The fourth year was Kyle Troop, uh, a month before he won on tour. Wow. Okay. So I believe our TV finals kind of got people ready <laughs> well, they for were the tour. A little bit. They were legit. Yeah. Um, the fifth year was Matt McNeil. Uh, the sixth man. The sixth year was. Um, Is that the last one? No. Uh, Brandon Novak won the last one. That's number seven. Did he? Yeah. Because he beat Brad. He beat Brad. Brad Angelo, Angelo in the final. And I'm drawing a blank. On the number six, was that where? Where, where was that? Tropicana. Held? It was at Tropicana. Yeah. I'm, and I, is that I, the one Fagan bowled three times and, and didn't cash? And didn't cash. Oh no, he cashed. He Gotchel. 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 Gotchel was yeah. number six. I can't believe I forgot that. And that was when. <laughs> and and, and here, here's the other crazy thing about that event. Uh, the first one was like uh, Doug Lakey, Steve Orff, and Jackie Bowling on the call, right? So then the next year was me and Doug Lakey, right? Because we had this podcast and stuff, and it, I kept it like that. And then it was so hard to run the tournament and commentating that I eventually said, I need to remove myself from this booth. And it was like Jeff Carter, Dennis Hacker, Matt Turek, Carolyn Doran Ballard working the sideline. Yeah, when Del Ballard made a run, he was leading the tournament. 
Uh, it was the most unbelievable moment in the history of r- live streaming and uh, stuff. It, uh, someone, there was some other commentator. It wasn't Randy. Was it Randy? Well, well Randy Peterson was there for two years. Uh, Dave Lamont was there with Bo Burton one year. <laughs> yeah, that was I mean, the year. That was the year Bill and Ill one, right? No, that was the that the uh, that was your Gotchel one. Was the was the uh, was the Burton and uh, Dave Lamont? I put those <laughs> two together. I mean, wow. we're talking some. I stepped aside. I got out of the booth. Like at first, it was like I wanted to be a commentator. But then, as the more and more I ran this thing, I'm like, man, I want this thing to be top notch. I yeah. mean, and when you think about it, Dave Lamont before he was the voice of the PBA last year, but he still had done some USBC stuff. Dave Lamont. Randy Peterson, um, Bo Burton, uh, you know, even like Jeff Car- Jeff Carter was instrumental sitting in that booth for holiday doubles and stuff like that. He and Dennis Hacker, they mm-hmm. helped put Inside Bowling on the map, and I'll never forget those guys for that. Yeah, it was a, a great tournament, man. It's yeah. kind of sad to see it go. It did. But I guess as that tournament was, I guess, kind of ending, your uh, focus and energy was kind of going more towards building this inside bowling as a social because social media. Well, I needed to market. make money eventually. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, so why social media? Were you good at it? I don't know. I I think I've always just been able to figure out what makes people react. Really, it just interests you. Yeah, it does. Like, I have a drone. You guys know that. You guys have a drone mm-hmm. now too. Like, I would be the type of guy that would like to fly over a farm. And figure out why all the cows are in one corner. And I would be like, how could I get all the cows to go from here every day over to there? Like, what's different about right here? What's making them come here every day? You know, is it the hay? Is it the way it smells? And I would just go out in the field and I would smell around. I'd check the the the, the fertilizer. You know, what is ever? Why are they here? What is it? Is it because there's shade? What is it? And then I'd want to try to create that exact same environment, but better somewhere else on the farm and see if I can get all the cows to go there. That interests me. Yeah. And that's same with social media. What gets clicks? Uh, why did this thing get so much reaction? Why did people share this? And now you just study that nonstop? Uh, kind of. Yeah. Sort of. And then at that time, you know, I guess, you know, social media was obviously around, but in the last five six years has really taken off into it's employing people such as yourself oh yeah so and before that it i don't think it was really at that point yet and even us to an extent like yeah i mean yeah now with our youtube page i mean it it is i mean we use that i mean that's a social media outlet that you know beforehand uh youtube's been around for a while but we kind of jumped on the bandwagon hey now we can just create content and get exposure you know we've been utilizing that yeah. I I follow Gary Vanerchuk. I talk to you guys about this guy all the time. He talks about white space. Something that's nobody's there yet. He did it with Google Ads years ago, whatever. There was not an online uh bowling vlog life on the road bowling lifestyle no. channel. That was a white space. Yeah. I told you guys about it. Brad wanted to start doing something on YouTube a long time ago, had no clue what was going on. You two hooked up. I don't even know how it all, I don't even remember how it came about. And then I started telling you guys, man, run with it. Go, go do this. Hey, I went to VidCon. I learned this. Hey, here's this. Here's this. And then they, they call me saying, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? What do you think about this for a thumbnail? Whatever. But these guys are getting to the point now where they, uh, they're they teaching me things. And that's the fun part. That is the that is the fun part. It is. Because now, kinda... we, now we can feed off of each other. Yeah. Like what thumbnails work? What uh, type of title with certain types of thumbnails? Like Yeah, you were saying cause... the other day, I hear if you put parentheses in there, it's 30, you get 30% more. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know, I'm like, either you're bullshitting with me and just messing with me trying to, trying to but I'm like. Or it actually I, works. But it was noted in my mind that when I get home, <laughs> yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to research this. One of these next videos Mike's putting out is for sure going to have parentheses on Multiples. It. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Brackets, <laughs> too. Pipes. Everything. Right. <laughs> I don't know exactly how it started, but I remember we went to Jonesboro and we used our cell phone for the first time. I know one of our I, one of the motivations that we were talking about is you know we have so much dead time while we're bowling. You yeah. Know, you bowl a block, you do this, and then you just come back in the hotel room and just sit there. And we were like, man, we have to engage. Like, there's we have so much time to do stuff that could be used productively, and we're not doing it at all. And there's got to be something. And then it's either the whole, drive Uber while you're there, you're right? right? Yeah. yeah. 
Or you just a lot of players just sit there and they go yeah, home to their hotel room nothing. and they relax. Or they play poker on their phones or, yeah. or they get Pokemon into bad bad habits into whatever. Yeah. 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 So and obviously, yeah, exactly. So we, you know, obviously didn't want to go down a lot of those roads and then we started talking with you and then we kinda threw around this idea of a vlog and I remember Jonesboro were like, Screw it, let's do it. I and, know. We, and we did it with our cell phone the uh-huh. wrong, the wrong way. way. Vertical vertical, yeah, vertical where there's black bars on each side and uh we, we had no idea and, we're and i remember you, you sent it to me so what'd you think and i'm like uh you gotta hold the phone <laughs> i think we, the, i think the first thing you guys did actually was when you scared the shit out of brad yeah in that the was car. before that was before that was like hey this is our that i remember that being like you broke ground so if they say hey this new walmart's coming and they yeah. all, the whole city comes yeah. out they put on hard hats and they like cut the ribbon and like take the first dig that was your first shovel dig. And that thing went a little viral in it the did, bowling it community. Did. We like, thought we about it a lot. The title we gave it was Please Share, but then we thought about it. Like, what if we gave it a different title? If Would it have actually went viral? Like, would it yeah. have actually yeah. Yeah. been a viral video? It was interesting because that was – people still come up to us about that day. Like, <laughs> oh, hey, yeah. like, you need to do some more segments where you're scaring the crap out of Brad. I'm like, I'm sure Brad would love that. Well, so. well that's <laughs> another idea for you guys. You know, you guys could do pranks within your channel and stuff. You guys are likable guys. But it's it, it is so many ideas. There is. And it's just, yeah, try to we love it. Them. And the cool part about it now is we're uh, – a lot of the PBA players are starting to warm up to it. So now we can – we're like beforehand – People are like, all right, they're walking around with the camera. Oh, yeah. They didn't really understand At what first, was going on. We yeah. didn't even understand. It was bad. And now guys are coming up and welcoming it and uh, getting in the videos, which we love. And now it's enjoying. It's growing. People are getting more exposure um, for both. The fans are getting more exposure to content. And now the players are getting exposed to a bigger audience. Yeah. Which is just great for everyone. Like so. we, we had a scenario where our buddy Packy said a cuss <laughs> word, which which we've been kind of like testing the waters. But he said a cuss word and someone actually recognized him from that moment in the vlog. And that's not a great thing because he said a cuss word. But that's also – He said a, the worst cuss word. He did. He Well – I know, but yeah. we so we, that was we our meant fault. to bleep it out. We meant to bleep it out. And we kind of screwed him in that now, aspect. Now, mind you, we've been editing till about three or four in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> we forget about it. But I will say, somebody remembered who he was. Yeah, no, yeah. Like, how right. cool is yeah. that? Yeah. From one of our vlogs, I thought that I thought that was really neat. That shows yeah. we've get, we've gained a lot of progress. I, Mike, I don't know if I told you this. I was looking at the numbers today. After 365 days after we opened the channel, from June 2017 to June 2018. Guess how many subscribers we had after one year? Mm, 3,000? 2,000. Okay. And then nine months later, we have 22,000. Yeah, it's un... Isn't that crazy? I want to say the word now, <laughs> but I won't. That's be- unbelievable. You just you, have to keep doing it. It's the work, man. You got to put in the work. I know. Did you think we could get to this growth so fast? Y- yeah. Fast. Describe Fast. I mean, yeah. I guess, I guess. <laughs> yeah. okay, so fast is definitely perspective because it didn't seem like fast. No, it, but then, like the last week, we've gained 4,000 people, you know, following our channel and stuff. So, And it's not all just the TV show that you made either because um, I don't want people to think just because you made a TV show, that's what enhanced it. It was more the regimen and the commitment of posting daily from the World Series. Yeah. That re- really was. It was. It was the fact that you were posting daily and that you had a lot of momentum going in. You were picking up five, six. I remember you saying, uh, "Mike, we're crushing it right now." You know, <laughs> yeah. um, and and that just when when you're doing things right and you're working hard, good things come to you. Yeah, that, I think then a lot of that now is um, when we're getting this reward, we're we're seeing people really like it. That's fueling us to edit till three, four in the morning because we want to create this content that's better and better for right. people to see because, I mean, it's just, it's awesome that it's like we're, sp- in our little way, we're putting like a little spark in bowling. And yeah. It's fun. I mean, like our, the TV show I made the other night. Yeah. That was electrifying. Yeah. It, yeah. I, and, I, and I, I could, I would have never imagined that we like would have, uh, we would have received that welcome. Right. There. I was there for all three shows and yours had the most energy. Yeah, isn't that crazy? It is, and we, I've never made a single show before, and everyone even recognized Brad. I know and they Brad, put the camera on me, and the crowd started chanting "Brad." I yeah. know, I know. I'm but like, okay, Brad's not even bowling in the show. When Dick Allen gave his acceptance <laughs> speech, he said something about you know these young people, these young bowlers. You got to stay, you got to stay sharp. 
the young bowlers out there like Brad and Kyle. Yeah. Not not Kyle, who he just beat first, but yeah. Brad and Kyle, because that's the name of the YouTube channel. <laughs> I yeah. thought he said Kyle and Brad. I thought I think it was Brad and Kyle. Was I it? To watch that back, but yeah. That, and I was like, man, this is like unbelievable. And and tonight when we're when we're actually taping this thing or whatever the hell we're doing, um, it was <laughs> B.J. Moore versus Chris Prather tonight, and Chris Prather got his first title. Yeah. And those guys are extremely talented bowlers. Very and good. Super great guys. But I told you guys earlier tonight that, you know, if if you didn't have this YouTube channel when you made your show or when you guys were the doubles leaders, it would be just like Prather and BJ Moore. Like they they don't have social media. Prather doesn't. I don't think he actually they don't, has social. Media. They don't have the following. I mean, they're they're great guys. If you know Prather, like Brent Bowers was posting tonight, and mm-hmm. all these Wichita guys and all these different people. Congratulations to Chris Prather. It was all over my feed, and people inside of bowling itself Loved know it. love Chris Prather. Yeah. He is awesome. He's yeah. probably like I think I said on another podcast I was on that sweep the rack podcast I said you know Prather once he wins I wouldn't be surprised if he won four or five tournaments in a row he's that good yeah he's he's one of the most versatile players out here but the YouTube thing and the and you guys don't even do any good at your social media no, no we you don't. guys are only focused on YouTube which is fine but at some point in time as yeah. revenue comes in and stuff having to get your social media out there because you made a show and didn't even update your, any of your statuses saying, hey, everybody tune in I and know. watch. And, I try to save it know. all for the YouTube. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he actually mentioned to me at the show that like if, if this was full-on going, uh, this whole process we got going on, you would actually have a guy there for you well, filming you, updating your social media, like you would actually have a guy doing all that for you. Yeah, we talked about possibly forming like where my company could help here and we could all kind of get involved and work even closer together. But the idea would be that as soon as you make a show, either one of you guys, you would come up with the text and the words that's from you, from the heart, what you want to say to your fans. And that's part of your checklist of what you have to do. And once you send that in, then all the graphics get created to have people tune in and watch. Here's yeah. your statement to what you want to say to your fans, yeah. et cetera, et cetera that's how that that everybody whoever's why i'm looking at it that is how bowling can really grow yeah it's because every athlete in bowling should have that but right now you can't afford a publicist right you know? yeah. you just can't and it's, some people just don't like social media i mean i i totally understand like chris right there he just doesn't like it and it's it's counterproductive to force him to do it because he's just going to hate it. He's going to hate his life doing it. He doesn't want to do it. If you try and force him to do it, it ain't going to sure. work. Yeah. Like the audience that he's going to potentially reach isn't really going to really buy into it because it's going to eventually show that he's just not into social media. And that's okay, man. Some people aren't into social media. It's kind of this tricky thing where you know having a big following isn't for everybody. It's not for everybody. Yeah, it's so. not. I mean, as as much as and it's it's a tough predicament because as much as it's not for everyone, it it's does, essential. It, it, <laughs> yeah, it's essential, especially when you're in the kind of the the business that we are in, where we you know we're trying to grow as athletes, grow our name, grow our reach, um, and that helps us in all avenues of the industry. And that's why I've always been on the board of I I personally believe that. Uh, the social media growth shouldn't just be solely up to the person doing it because if you rely on the person, it's not going to be... It should be... The the PBA should have that figured out. How are we going to promote these guys? And all the other sports, a lot of them don't even but, use but social media. But they have media. like six employees. Correct. They they don't have the time or the manpower or yeah. any of that stuff. It's not possible for them so to So the do only that. way for this to happen is it's for people... For people to say, I'm going to work my ass off for no return. Yeah, for an extended period of time. You said how one year, two thousand subscribers. You guys weren't even approved for AdSense. We were not. We had made all that time and work. We had made a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars one year. Yeah, yeah. I think back to those times. Like we didn't care. Yeah, we, which, we were getting three hundred views a video, yeah. or like a thousand views. A video. Which now we're starting getting video, getting views, but we still haven't taken us. We haven't taken one dollar in revenue and spent it on anything other than equipment to make more, yeah, better content. content we haven't. Yeah. Not a can, can we be dollar. completely transparent here on your podcast? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. So, so I don't want people to get the wrong idea here because I've had this happen to me, and it 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 actually had several people at a prior job, look at me in a different way because they thought I was getting rich off YouTube. Okay. Yeah, yeah no. <laughs> um, these these guys, I think their best month has been, it's less than $1,500 in a month, okay? 
And that yes. camera right there is like 250 bucks. That camera is 250 bucks. That camera is 250 bucks. That camera is 250 bucks. There's like four lights in here. One's even on the floor right here, so less shadows, hopefully. Th those are 200 bucks a piece. The, the tripods they sit on, one of your tripods you guys just bought was like 399 bucks or something, yes. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. These headsets right here are $199. And I don't want this to be like a the thing that's recording right here, the Zoom thing. A few hundred bucks. Uh, yeah. yeah. So they're reinvesting it into this equipment, and this stuff's going to break. You, you Today you had to use one of my things for a, a tripod or something yeah. because yeah. you, you, you forgot the little top off of yeah. it. So, <laughs> it <laughs> but, so it just it, – it, but I love it how you're just reinvesting back in. Yeah, well, I mean, it's one of it's it's kind of you know we're ad addicted to it in the sense because people love this content and, and you know we're so passionate about it because a lot of the content that we're producing is stuff that we like to know that we want to see and now we're starting to be able to produce this in a way that people are enjoying it and we just want to make it as at least you know I feel we just want to make it as good as possible. Yeah. Well, for me, I could honestly personally care less about fame or my own personal brand or whatever. What I, which my, is very true, it is. Yeah, I that's mean, why I, people I, like Brad more than you. It's yeah, true. I mean, it's I, it does, it, for me, and they sure is. You, everybody likes the two of you more than me. <laughs> <laughs> I made too many damn mistakes already in this well, industry. I make a lot too. Um, <laughs> but for me, it's the PBA. I just want that to grow. I want there to be coverage yeah. on that, all of it together. Everybody in the PBA, I want to be known through our videos. And I, I, I'm fine with being in the back shadow. You know, it, it's just not about me. I just want everyone yeah. to get a piece of the pie. And then if that can happen, then I can, I'll, I'll be there. And people, I'll, get, I'll get some of it. People <laughs> see what you're saying right now just by the way you act in your videos. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. And, and that's why, that's one of the reasons, you know, we love making the videos is to gain exposure. So when we have guys like Chris Braith, they're like, he may not take the time to, you know, update his social media as much, but when we turn the vlog on him, he wants to get in there. He wants to get in, and we're all about promoting guys in that. Yeah, aspect. I like this Nick Pate, Chris Me Prather, too. They're kind of Richie T's is kind of sliding yeah. in there now. It's yeah. like this. It's almost more fun when you have the guys that other people don't know. And I notice in your comments, I read all your comments, by the way, and that's a social media tip for anybody at home. If you own your own business or whatever, you need to read the comments and respond to them. Nobody wants to have a, a one-sided conversation ever. But anyway, I read all your comments. And like you had one with Belmo like for the first four or five minutes, whatever. I helped work yeah. on that editor or whatever. And there was even one comment in there that says, I really don't like Belmo kind of hijacking your channel. doesn't feel authentic. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah, I mean, because Belmo obviously is embracing and trying to help you guys. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And that's really what he's doing. And it was interesting that someone actually had something. I mean, I know that he's a controversial subject in bullying. I get all that. And I'm sure it was just one of his haters saying it. But, I mean, you guys have Jason Belmonte, the Mike Trout, yeah, the Tom exactly. Brady of our yes. sport, the Tiger Woods, right? And he's like, oh, you guys are bowling each other? Let me be the one to grab the camera yeah. and be in the bowling center when I don't, I'm not bowling today. And that's honestly why I love. It's amazing. I, that's what I love about that guy is he's not afraid to make the decision to do something. He's not afraid to be in front of the camera. He's not afraid to do all that yeah. stuff. So he sees, if you see something that's very productive and potentially good for bowling, he's going to step right in and help. Yeah, he does. And he's, he's done, done that multiple times with us. Yeah, I, also, I also think that it, it's, it's, it, we need to talk about this if we're talking about people helping the channel. When you guys made that, that double show. Oh, it was amazing. The fact that you guys went in to Rob Stone and Randy Peterson and Kimberly Pressler, and you talked about the YouTube channel, and Rob goes, get out your camera. I thought you guys were YouTubers. Yeah. Rob Stone helped that day. Oh, oh yeah. Right? Yeah. They okay. all... Not only that, but Fox, PBA, Tom Clark, and everybody that works there, they all embraced the YouTube channel, and they all actually wanted to promote it, and they didn't have to do that. No, not at all. And even we had our buddy Matt Sanders... Uh, uh, offered to film the whole thing, which he did a great job since we were bowling. Yeah, it's it's been a collaborative effort through multiple, multiple different resources, and it's just so cool that everyone's embracing it and bringing it on. Because, like I said, we we haven't made a single dollar. We've actually lost money on this. Oh, oh yeah, way in debt. Way in debt. <laughs> and, it, and and if you if you paid yourself even ten dollars an hour for every hour you've invested, you guys yeah, are probably totally forty, fifty thousand. You got to recoup. Yeah. Oh, easy, <laughs> easy. So it's just it. So it, it. I think the message you know we're getting across is obviously we're not doing it for the money. We just want to grow bowling. We want to grow the PBA. But I do think it's even. But I do think that the that the down the road upside of being able to make a living, having some 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 guaranteed income coming in, so that you can go out and bowl, and enjoy it, and provide value, 
to sponsors, people, uh, get more people turned on to the sport. I do think that there is a, an end goal of monetization because you guys are young. We saw a guy like Mike Fagan. He was one of the best on tour. Right. Stepped away because he knew that the time was ticking. And at 50 years old, you hit a cliff and you go senior tour for a while. But then what do you do? There's no retirement. Yeah. So he just stepped away completely. And that's that's sad for the game of bowling that Mike Fagan is not bowling it anymore. Is. Love what he's done. Proud of him. Mm. Great guy. But you two guys are going to be in the same sort of situation. You guys yeah. are both very smart. You guys have degrees. you know, And we don't want to see you leave the sport, right? This type of thing is the way that you could potentially stay in the sport, stay bowling. And actually, you guys could be the next Eddie Elias of bowling, well, the guy that's bringing all the money in. And we've talked about that. Like, Where does it go in, in three to four years? Uh, are we still competing very heavily? Uh, and are we still giving it our all mentally in that aspect? Or are we more so like a little bit more on the side dealing with this stuff, helping out the PBA, being in control of maybe uh, some video stuff for the PBA? Or is our workload completely different than it is now? Uh, we don't know. We ha literally have no idea. But we're very optimistic for the opportunities that are going to arise because I think as long as we just keep working hard and doing what we're doing, Good thing. It yeah. doesn't matter what it is. Something good is going to happen. Well, yeah. Let's do some more transparency, Kyle. T tell everybody who's knocked on your door so far. Oh man, everyone for the most part. Yeah, I let's just name. Let's just name a pretty few. Pretty much. Okay, so knocking on the door. Yeah, knocking on your door. Who who has approached you about uh, creating content, getting involved? Yeah, I major mean, organizations in bowling. <laughs> <laughs> um, pretty much everyone. So we've had we've had people come up wanting to make videos about products. Uh, the PBA, we've talked about with them. Obviously, our bowling ball companies. Lately, the USBC, um, we've been talking to them about trying to collaborate on some content. Yeah. Is there anyone USBC. else out there? I don't know. I was kind of confused from the question. From yeah, the I know. I was, I was like, I'll take this I, yeah, over. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know no, yeah. Are you talking about USBC? I'm, I'm just, just saying. In general. I just remember being on the phone with Kyle. I was in Hopkinsville working on one of the weeks that I'm there. And I remember him saying, hey. You know, that idea that we had that we wanted to do with, like, reviewing some shows and stuff? Yeah, Tom Clark talked to us, and, you know, he'd like to maybe do some sort of collaboration with them. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, uh, the Junior Gold vlogs that, you know, we did with Corey. Yeah, with PBI. You know, all this stuff kind of just intertwines. And then USBC liked them, saw it, liked you guys. You guys met with them. You guys have talked a few times. Might have something coming in the future. Might not have some. But it's just interesting yeah. that everybody is like, Okay, this is gold. Let's work together. Let's figure this out. Yeah, it's it's crazy. Like what you said earlier, you know, putting on all this hard work for no monetary gain. You know, we kind of just like put our head down, went to the grind, put as much work in, and see what happens. What doors do we open? And we still feel like we're nowhere. I mean, it seems like oh, you're just getting started. Yeah, but it's just oh. it just shows like if you just put your head down, start working, yeah. figure it out things start just kind of happening and transpiring. I mean, like this week, we're like, okay, we're going to vlog every day. Do we necessarily want to do it? Do we want to put in all this work hours? Not really. But do we want to build this and create content for people? Absolutely. Then what happened? We have our greatest week of growth ever. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. And, when I, and you kind of mentioned too, I think a little bit has to do with like the reason like we're vlogging and staying engaged We've also been bowling better than we ever have this oh, sure. season. Yeah. Both of us have. There's a correlation there. You think there. there's a correlation there? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I've told you guys that. Well, yeah. like, if you, if I also think you got picked on the PBA League because you had a YouTube channel. And, I, and I'm not trying to slam does, your ability. Yeah. I truly believe that. If you didn't have the YouTube channel, I'm not sure you were a slam dunk to make it. Yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> Last year? And I know it probably hurts to hear because, no, you know, well, you deserve to based off your ability. Well, yeah, but here's uh, – yeah. The only rebuttal I have is I don't even know if Norm knew we had a <laughs> yeah. YouTube channel. Well, yeah. And, and, the, so and the other guys on the team aren't social media experts no. either, so. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> that's my only rebuttal. Yeah, that. that's true. I'm still going to stick to – I'm still going to – I'm not even sure if Norm knew my last name. Like, honestly, I was just kind of like – He's. I have no. Maybe idea. Was, I still have no idea why he that, did that. That, that sex appeal. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Maybe. Uh, maybe. Maybe. Maybe Norm is metrosexual. Right. Yeah. Well, I, the. Uh, I forgot what I was gonna say. Yeah, I screwed you up yeah. on that one. No, you're good. Um. Oh, I was gonna say, if you're if you're a guy coming out of college or you're a good bowler or whatever, and you want to give the tour a shot. 
coming out and not doing very good and not having much to do, you don't feel very important. You don't feel very uh, successful at the moment because you're not bowling very good. These guys are running laps around you. Uh, it can be a very lonely, it can be a very frustrating feeling. And so what this does is that, uh, like, it takes us away from that. On our bad days, we still have something to achieve. It's like uh, when, when Kyle made the show, he had an unbelievably successful day. But I also felt like I also had an unbelievably successful day as well. Like, I had work to do. Yes, you did. And, and that, like... Yeah, because yeah. obviously, I, like, like like that day, I was beat. I didn't. I we usually kind of do go fifty fifty on the edit, and you took a full range shooting, <laughs> editing up till six a.m. getting it done. Yeah, Amazing. well, I had help. It, dude, yeah, it, I mean, okay. you had help with these. Two, it was but. hilarious. So I'm sitting here, you in the bed, and <laughs> I'm sitting here editing on my computer, and Corey's watching me. So I'm trying to like be quick with everything I do, yeah. and and he's just sitting there, and then he looks at me and he goes, "Can I edit?" <laughs> <laughs> and I just started laughing. I'm like, yeah, dude. Yeah, and he pissed me like, off about the audio. He starts <laughs> fixing like three audio tracks. And I'm like, dude, I'm not going to remember which one's got fixed. I'm like, I'm not even going to mess with the audio. <laughs> I cut like 10 minutes out of this thing. It was 20 minutes. Cut down to like 12 or whatever it was. But I think I think everybody at home still needs to know also that, that this was the actual schedule. Like I was on I was on the that, that Sweep the sweep the Rack podcast again. Yeah. I like yeah. their podcast, by the way. I'm sorry that I'm yeah, let's plug them. like it's a weird yeah, name. Yeah, let's plug them. But yeah, go, go, go check them out. They're on iTunes, Spotify, everything. Everywhere and I believe this is too, or at least getting there. Yeah, it's getting there. Uh, <laughs> they use an app called Anchor, uh, which I told them about. No, uh, <laughs> but anyway, so the Anchor app. Anyway, they put it out. You, they they have to preview on all these different ones. I think you still got iTunes to go, right? Yeah, yeah I think that's the last one. The last right? one. Pod yeah, Bean, that, Stitcher, and then you know you're there. Um, but anyway, on that podcast, they're you just like, got another sub. Yeah, I know. I, I've been watching <laughs> it the whole time here. I have it open. Socialblade.com is where you can go see how, where these YouTube channels are at and how they're growing. But Anyway, uh, on there they were like, when I said I was staying in an Airbnb with you guys, they were like, oh, tell us all the stories of the party and whatever. I'm like, I don't think people really understand. You guys got up at 10 a.m., showered, went to the bowl, bowled your block, vlogged, went to the Smoothie King or whatever the hell it was. Tropical uh, Cafe. Okay, there it is. We got to uh, keep plugging had your health, had, <laughs> had your healthy uh, snacks uh, and smoothies. And then you would edit a little bit there, and then you then you'd bowl the next block, and then you come back here and you'd make your organic hamburger, <laughs> and your and your grapes and your blackberries, <laughs> and you know eat all your little foo foos, <laughs> and then you'd start editing, and you'd get done at editing like two thirty, three o'clock in the morning, seriously, and then up to bed, sleep from three a.m. to ten a.m. seven hours, that's enough. And then do it all over again. You, all, and yeah. that was it. That was really what happens here. It wasn't. No. There was there was free Coronas. They, they, this house came with free Coronas. And I didn't see you guys have one. No. I didn't, no. And you even said to me, we went to, I, I drug these guys to a concert the other night because I try to look for something on one night. If I have like a, 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 a slow night or something, I try to pick one thing to do if I'm going to be gone for 13 days in a row. And Buck Cherry was in town. I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna go to this concert. If you guys want to go, concert. anyway, we go. It was fun. Uh, also in a bowling alley, it, we'll it, which we didn't even know about. Um, but it was cool. And 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 uh, I, I was like, hey, you guys drinking tonight? And this is a great opportunity to drink. I mean, this was the time to drink. They both had to bowl the next day and everything, but they could have had a beer too. So no, no, no. And Kyle, how long haven't you drank since? Yeah, we. I mean, we both really. I mean, I've I've had I've had one. I've drank one time this year, and just because we've been on a kind of a health kick but it's also like when we're out here doing our business and stuff you know that that one night where you kind of drink or get drunk and then you don't do the edit and then it kind of prolongs everything and it's a snowball effect and uh -huh. then you're playing catch up uh, it's just you know we're, we're focused on kind of doing this and it's just this is taking up so much of our time i don't even think about drinking like i had no no aspirations to have that where before all this Without this motivation, I mean, I would, I would definitely help sure. myself to a beer or two. Yeah. So yeah, and that's for both of us. Brad hasn't drank either. Yeah, I'm going the whole year. He's gonna try. Yeah. It. And I, I, I don't know if I'll make it the whole year. I hope so. When we have these months off from the PBA tour, and I'm around with my buddies at home, and there's not much going on, that may change. But right now, I mean, I'm, it's great. Yeah, it's like. It's, yeah, I just think that this year, out of all years, maybe next year will be more important, but. I think this year is the most important year of our lives yeah. for the most part. Like the growth of the PBA, the growth of our channel, the growth of us as people, growth of us as bowlers. Like everything's starting to fire on all cylinders, and it's good just to, to be sharp. Like it's 
good to not have those nights where you drink too much and then you feel terrible the next day. That's mm-hmm. what got me. Mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys, but when I drink now, I feel terrible the next day. Yeah, I had two. I had two. And one. This is one of the reasons I stopped drinking as well. Is the one two last times I drank, I got indigestion. I had never had heartburn. <laughs> Or indigestion. <laughs> and it was terrible. <laughs> and I, I literally, two of the times, no, like, it was not just that. Like, I was throwing up because of it. It got me, like, super sick. No idea why. And I'm like, man, this ain't worth it. I don't need a drink anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I just didn't want that. I mean, one of the days, we had to drive home from Lubbock. Yeah. 12 hours in a car yeah. after I was literally up all night throwing up. Yeah. From drinking. Because we went out because it was our last night there. Yeah. We went out. It's a little college town, and yeah, after that, I have no aspirations to do it. So yeah, there comes a point in time. It's just like no, it'll change. I'm sure. I'm, I'm but really like the enjoyment you get of going out and drinking now, I get the enjoyment of building something, working. Like yeah. oh, it, the hitting that upload it, button, like and, and like it, you know, checking it out. You know, dude. The other night when I was completely overwhelmed, as soon as you made the show, I'm over here like thinking, okay, how's this vlog gonna go? It's obviously gonna be really long, way more detailed than our other ones. Like I'm starting, and I, it took me forever to to get it done. But once I got it done, I was like. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, like, like today, no better feeling. Today, most of our day was uh, working with these Patreons that we're doing, like that we're trying to build, like this community of bowlers on this Discord chat that we're trying to um, build, where people can just uh, talk and uh, just intermingle about bowling ideas. And then we're trying to figure out how we can schedule lessons, and then maybe bring more people. And it's just building all this stuff to try to create a better product is it's it's addicting well it's gotten it's, it's gotten to the point where we have no off days anymore like yeah we had an off day today bowling wise and then we still had a ton of work we needed to do yeah you built a little g suite yeah. calendar that we can use we threw around a couple ideas of how we can grow that thing we did three online lessons with some people like we always have something to do now like we for the for, for as long as we do this we will always have something to do it's great yeah. it is great yeah i think we need to talk about patreon discord other channels of i mean i think from the business perspective you look at them as revenue channels yeah but from a real um from the heart you guys look at them as communities and ways for people to engage with you more you said you had a couple hundred uh requests on on instagram yeah people just hit you up you cannot keep up with that but for the people that are serious about wanting to really be able to have that extra attention from you guys, you guys have options available out there, which is what most creators do. I mean, that's just kind of par for the course on what you do. So you guys have Patreon, and I'm going to date myself at 39 years old. Um, Patreon, you guys are about half my age. Well, not quite, but about half my age. But Patreon, I always viewed as like a money grab and like something that people would, you know, just creators you know that's the key yeah. word creators, creators would do yeah. to uh to get people to to give you money every month right and as i've looked into what you guys have done you guys have taught me more about it and it's much more than just giving these guys money it's 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 a way to support them but also get up close and personal with you guys and then this discord which is something I learned about in the last 6 months on my own and then they said they had one i was like wow okay at least know what this is yeah is if is if you're part of the community at a certain yeah. level, you get to be part of the Discord, which essentially is a private chat room, kind of like the old inside yeah, bowling, yeah, but right? but an, a private chat room where you can interact with these guys and ask them questions in a chat format, almost like text messaging, but it's through this app, or you can do it on a desktop. But at the same time, those people are part of an elite community. And they're all there for the same reason. So you have a lot in common with these people. They're, most of them are pretty heavy into bowling. Yes. And they start their own conversations in there. Yeah. They do, yeah. It, it's transpired into this where we don't necessarily do a lot of the chatting. It's just this nice community of bowlers to where if you have a question like, hey, guys, here's my six-ball arsenal. What do you think about this? Or I'm going to bowl in this pattern this weekend. What do you guys like think I should take? And uh, we didn't we didn't really think that was going to happen. We just thought people would just be asking us questions all the time. Right. And now it's it's just this little nice little chat room that people are just conversing in. And we don't do a whole lot of chatting now. We do like we'll comment, hey, what's going on, guys? Say anyone bowling any tournaments? Hey, we're about to start this block. Sometimes during the block we're chatting. We're like, hey, you know, not doing very well today. Lanes but- are kind of tough, you know. 
And it's some, therapeutic. You told me you did it this week. Oh yeah, when, when you're bowling, yeah, and you're you know you're kind of bored or frustrated or whatever, you just hop in, start chatting with some people, and they'll chat with. There's enough people in there now that you'll get a response. Yeah, and then it, that can keep you busy if if you're looking into something like that. And some people they'll post videos of themselves bowling, and then other people will be like, I think your left shoulder is kind of tilting in too much, or you know, I don't think that ball's laid out correctly, or what's your pap, or like they're helping each other out. Like man, what could be better? And the, mean, and, the, and you're right. The good part is we've funneled this community into people that are serious about bowling and share a lot of the same values or else they wouldn't have, you know, paid the money to get on these tiers. So yeah, like we don't want people to see it as like a money grab thing. But like you said, when I have 200 requests on Instagram, it's really hard to sit there. I would much rather um, respond and take time out of my day to get to these people that like are really, really serious, not neglecting the other ones, right. but you know, building this community that, um, is really sharing the core values that we have uh, is just, it's it's really, it's an amazing feeling. It's starting to take up more and more of our time, which is great. Yeah. And you even have an offer, you even have a dollar a month through Patreon. I mean, you have like all yeah. these different levels, but like, let's compare this to like, um, like a music industry, for instance, when the music industry went south and all the Napster, all the all the music was free or whatever. People had to tour more, and now you see all these different tiers where if you want to go backstage and meet the artist, it's depending on the artist, it right. could be as much as you know three thousand yeah. dollars, right? Well, these guys are making this content, and they're making it for free on their own time. And we just heard they were upside down, you know, with all this time and effort and everything. But you can just by watching it, you can just you know, flow bowling so much money, and now the bowltv.com is so much money. And they, they kind of force you to pay it to see it. Here you get 99.9% .9 of the content is free on YouTube. Yeah. But if you want that next, uh, that next stuff and you want to help build so they can do more for free, you can support it through through what you guys are doing on Patreon and, and through the Discord thing. So if you like these guys and you want them to grow faster, you know, Pledge a dollar a month. Yeah, sure. I mean, Three dollars a month. Five dollars a month. You even had <laughs> these guys. They don't want me to say this, but they even had somebody reach out last week that wanted to give a ridiculous amount of money on a monthly basis just because they love what you're doing. Yeah. If you if you work hard and people see that, then they just want to support you. Like there's people out there with money. Yeah, and it's cool. Like the um, people that we're attracting is seriously the people that we want to have these conversations with, and it's a great feeling. Like, uh, was it Casey Mattingly we met? Yeah. And uh, awesome has center awesome guy came up to us. We actually got to meet him. He's like, hey, you know, I'm one of your patrons. Um, talk to him. He comments on a lot of our videos. Uh, he, you know, he wanted to have he wanted to buy his dinner. Yeah. Yeah. He, he offered to yeah. buy his dinner one night and uh, and just talk. And he was a great guy. Great mindset to and for with bowling, great attitude. And it's like, man, we're we're doing something right when we're starting to have these kind of conversations. Yeah, you'd be surprised how good you can make somebody feel and how much uh, favoritism comes your way if you just do nice things for the people that you spend the most time with, whether they know it or not. So, for instance, those of you that get bowling balls drilled and you have a favorite pro shop and you go on Facebook and you say, oh, this pro shop's the best, this pro shop's great, right? Well, if you really feel that way about them, why don't you just call them up at 10 a.m. on a Friday and say, hey, guys, lunch is on me. What kind of pizza do you like? It's going to be delivered yeah. at 12. I mean, $10, yeah. you know? Yeah. I mean, 20 bucks. Yeah. And I guarantee you the next time you walk in that pro shop, and you're like, hey, I got a new ball. Do you think maybe you get to it this week? This week, I'll put you in front of the line. I'll do yeah, it right now for you sure. in front of you. Like, just it's, it's mind-blowing. How people just don't think about stuff like that. Yeah, if you're just nice to people. Yeah. You guys want to talk about the PBA League? Yeah. Yeah, sure. this thing is like, I, we didn't even know what we were going to talk about, but we ended up talking yeah, about your <laughs> channel. Yeah, sure. and That's what I love. That's what I love and about whatever. this. Whatever. <laughs> I, I can't, if, if you're still listening to this podcast, you're probably a Patreon <laughs> person or a yeah, Discord it, it, person it, because we boy. lost you one of our boys, 45 yeah. minutes ago. Uh, so I, I have a question that I want to ask you guys about the PBA League. Okay. I think it's a great question to ask, but I want to talk a little bit about the, what the PBA League is. The PBA League was started how many years ago? Like four year, five, no, six no, no, years? No, 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 no. No, it started the year here at Thunder Bowl. The last time it was at Thunder Ten Bowl. Years? No, no, no. The last time it was at Thunder Bowl before it left. Um, and I know this because I was working for the PBA doing extra frame that week. 
and I did the first ever analysis with Mike J and Jeff Goodger of every single one of the teams oh, for yeah. that year. So let's see. I've been working with the UBI for four years. I worked for Storm for just about two. So that's six. And the year before that, it's seven years ago. Wow. So, so about seven years. It's it's been I'm gonna be close with seven years. Okay, so the PBA decided to put together this PBA league. It's the team event side of bowling, you know. Uh it's changed every year their policies and how they do things, how many people they keep, but essentially you have managers that were supposed to be like these celebrity type people. Mm-hmm. They ended up being like other bowlers now. Good try though. Good I mean try. you gotta, oh, you gotta, get, you gotta, you gotta reach for it. Yeah, 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 heck yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Good try. And they had people in, like yeah, Billie Kevin Jean, Hart was yeah, in. Yeah, Billy Jean King, uh um, yeah. S- so, several people. Um, and so it's getting ready to come up, and there really isn't a whole lot of talk about it. Nobody's talking about it. Then, I mean, no one really knows what's going on. Like, there just isn't any conversation about it going at all, really. I Maybe think the it, focus is on the week-to-week tour right now. Oh, yeah, sure. Fox, yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, just, it's, but it's, it's crazy for the players, too, because there's, this, there's the draft. And, you know, it's really everyone's dream to get drafted. Even the guys that are... I would think in the league from year to uh, from year to year, you know they get a little excited around the draft, and it's a it's actually I mean it's one of the biggest events in my opinion of the whole year. Um, the suspense, uh, and I, from being able to bowl last year, that atmosphere is yeah. something that no bowler wants to miss out on. In particular, it, the it's done in Maine, Portland, Maine at Bayside Bowl, and that's just that's that's the best venue we go to. The fans are absolutely nuts; they love us there. The 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 proprietor Charlie, he's great. He loves the PBA. Like the players have so much fun there; they love bowling there. It's just an atmosphere you want to be a part of. Mike, have you ever been? No, I'm going in two weeks. You've so. never nice. been to the league? No. In, cool. in my opinion, out of all the PBA tournaments or any bowling tournament in general, if you were ever going to watch one, the PBA league is it not even a close second. You don't even really have to bowl. I, I went last no. year, and I had a great time. I just love being there. No, I'm talking like, yeah, not even bowl. Like, yeah. I'm just a fan. If they want to go yeah, watch yeah, a yeah, PBA yeah, tournament. Exactly. Even for the environment around, because it's in Maine, it's beautiful, it's right on the port there. Um, the, the food is phenomenal. phenomenal. I mean, if you like clam chowder, uh, you're just yeah. going to crush it. No, you don't like no, clam chowder, no. well, it's okay. <laughs> do they, do they have a steak and shake there? Or a jack <laughs> <and> a <laughs> Not jack and mine. Okay, yeah, so my, my, my question. <laughs> yeah. If you're a manager, yeah. I don't even know what, what team he is. Um, if you're the manager of this particular person, do you keep Pete Weber? Oh, man. Um Wow. By I the mean, way, Carolyn Dorn Ballard is, the, is manager. the manager of their team. What are they? Do you, Kingpins. Do you keep Pete Weber? Um, the, I mean, that's a really difficult question. It is a difficult for, question for me to answer. Do you want me to think of it from like a handicapping? You're, you know, you're actually a, like a saber metrics guy. You're well, you Carolyn know. Dorn Ballard, right? You got to think though. Okay, so let's look at it from a logical standpoint. Since you brought this question up, uh, you save three people. Mm-hmm. You have you have to save three. I think you have. Do you have? I to don't save think you? so. I don't think so. You do, don't have to so save three. I don't think so. But so I, see, we don't save, know. We you don't can, know. You can save up to three. I know that okay. because Norm saves Tommy and Bill every year. Yeah. So that's three. So maybe you don't have to save and three. And Norm. And yeah, so Norm, so Tommy, and Bill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. he saves himself. And Norm. but So they have Pete, Marshall Kent, Sam Cooley, B.J. Moore, Anthony Pepe. Right. What do you, what do, you do? I mean, do you have to save three? I don't, I don't think you have to. I don't think you have but to. But do you want to save Pete? Do you throw him in? Because if, if you throw him away, he can't get picked. The only way he bowls PBA League is if they save him. Oh, so okay. Little, if I was the, if here. I was the manager, you you have to be in the top forty in points to be uh, picked for the PBA league. If you're outside the top forty in points, you can be saved still. But as long you have to be already a part of a team from last year, and if you don't get saved, you are not eligible to be drafted. Okay. Well, I keep Pete Weber for like four reasons. Okay, and they're not going to be the same four reasons for ninety nine percent of the population. Okay. Okay, but he's from St. Louis. I've known Pete for a long time. Pete has helped me grow inside bowling, and he didn't have to. Okay, so I'm going to keep him okay. for just my loyalty, St. Louis ties, etc. And that's not the the biggest reason why I'd keep him. The second reason is the biggest reason, and it's people want to watch Pete Weber. He's still the most popular bowler right. on the planet. It's good for bowling from a publicity standpoint. Um, the third reason why I'd keep Pete Weber 
is I believe um, when a person's going through difficult times or isn't bowling well, et cetera, et cetera, um, you have to remember the body of work. And I believe that people need to be patted on the ass and say, come on, let's, let's, get, let's, let's go, let's, let's do this. And I think that he deserves that after all these years. I would agree. And I would think the fourth reason is he's he is actually someone that can spark the rest of the team. He's extremely comfortable bowling on television. He's not going to be spooked, and I think he's just good for the environment. And what in if general. he can't bowl? What do you mean? What if he his hips start sacking? Oh well, then yeah, then he can't bowl. I mean, he's just so you, you draft him, but then you now you're down a guy. Yeah, well, I mean, I I think his I think he's okay. I think I mean I would ask him, are you okay? Yeah, you know that's. Part That's of, part of the, the doctor, the doctor's note. Yes, <laughs> yeah, okay. has to get a I, physical. I uh, yeah. yeah, get cleared. I mean, so I would keep Pete Weber in that instance. Also, looking at the team, and I don't want to take anything away from Anthony Pepe, one-time titleist, BJ Moore, right? It's BJ, right? Yeah, Sam uh, Cooley, never a titleist. Um, Sam Cooley, you know, good player. I'd keep Marshall and Pete and then draft. And if I wanted to try to get these guys back, I think they'll be available. I yeah. think that's what's going to happen if I had to guess. Uh, Carolyn obviously loves, you know, knows Pete. That's like the well. most controversial question you could have asked. I know. That, that's I a know. great I question. Didn't, I, didn't, just, I didn't know it was coming. I, was I like, didn't well. know it was coming either. Like, it's very difficult to even answer yeah, that. It's a good question. I mean, it's, it's sad to even think that we had to talk about it. Right. That it, makes me upset. Like it does. Yeah, I know. It does. It's just this. I mean, it's just the health. Like you don't know if the hips gonna hold up. Okay. And I think you're right. You know, he deserves to have that. Um, he's earned the right to have that little motivation. Like, hey guys, you know, let's Pete, let's get it going here and let's get back at it because the, m- mentally, you know, Pete um, has all the confidence in the world. It's just a matter of when his body starts getting together. I mean, he still believes that he can compete. I mean, that mindset's never going away. It's just when he just needs his body to cooperate. Well, I, I actually wish the league was different than the way that it's set up. How Bigger? Would, huh? How would you have the league? I, I don't know. I've never really. I, 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 I spitball here. I don't. Right. That's what this is going to be. But I believe that, this, that if for a fan, I think it would be great to have an old guys team where, or a Hall of Famers team or whatever you want to call it, right? Where Parker Bones on the team, Pete Weber's on the team. Uh, Norm, I, I well, no, Norm's it can border. Be Norm. It can be Norm. You know, but thing is, Norm probably doesn't want to be on that. Right, team. that's what I'm kind of like. And with what he's done recently, he kind of sort of doesn't fit that mold. But I, what would be nice is to have like a a Hall of Fame veteran team. Yeah. I wouldn't even mind a guy like Petraglia bowling if he could, if you know, if he if he's still yeah. throwing it down the lane, okay. Yeah. But like, I don't know. I would just like to have a yeah. a, a legend team that's, in that's, that league. That's kind of the thing that we debate on since we're so close to it is you know it's that it's that uh um debate to where do you have guys on there because they did well 10 years ago and earned most of the right there you know like norm's a different exception uh pete he's not in the top 40 this year he's not close can't really finish events walter he made one cut still not in the top 40 parker not close to the top 40 you know these guys yes taking nothing away of what they did years ago greatest bowlers of all time yeah. However, now they're not earning it. They're not getting it done, and that's that has to do with age. Um, you just they can't do what they used to do. Do you still give them that reward of being on the team? So it's is it that debate? Is it the guys now that are beating those guys every week? Because they are. There's guys. Are. There's yeah. guy like you know guys like Nick Pate just getting out here on the tour. He's beating them every single week. Or do you keep giving these guys spots because of what they did 10, 12, 15 years ago? I guess that's the direction. Again, I'd that, like to see two or three young gun teams in there with yeah. no tour titleists on these teams. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, Seriously. <laughs> yeah. And it's, I, w- I wouldn't mind that because a lot of those guys, are that's me and <laughs> imagine, my friends. Imagine, yeah, imagine you two, Nick Pate. Um, oh yeah, you can handpick a team. Yeah, um, and then and great. then you start then you start another team, and, and I know I'm a, I'm going to talk about EBI guys here just because I know them. But you take another team, you take you start with Sanders and Anderson, right? Yeah. Um, and maybe that team's now got like a Prather on it because he's he won a title. Nah, yeah, he won. I came and put him in the nine. I know he would be right. our team. But see, the, the the PBA league's crazy because Sanders had this amazing year. He's obviously an amazing bowler, but he's not in the top forty. Right. So. 
Do you save him? Yeah, what do you do there? <sighs> Who's on that team? You got it right there, right? You got uh, Dom, Smallwood, Ronnie. Low Shutter, Ronnie, Sanders. Sanders. Yeah, that's Sanders that, got drafted last year. That's, but the thing is, if they drop him, he's not eligible to be in the league. Yeah, right. So that's that's a t- it, it, it's just it's tough because it, obviously tough. right now we're both in the same boat. You know, I'm not going to get saved on my team because of right. Tommy and Bill. Right. So I'm getting back in the pool. But but you will get drafted now, especially with what you did this week and where you're at you in points. You're really high up definitely there Definitely get, get drafted. I, think, I mean, I, I believe. think you're going to get drafted. Yeah, yeah for I sure do. you're getting drafted. I also thought Anderson was getting drafted last exactly. year. Exactly, so. and that's the thing. He made shows. People thought he was right. getting drafted. But see, it's crazy because a guy like Andres Gomez wasn't having a great year, makes a show perfect timing to make a show like it couldn't have gotten any better uh bj moore came off he didn't bowl really any of the events kind of looked like he wasn't going to be bowling much uh, scraping by you know barely getting in the top 40 maybe not getting in there boom he gets in the top 40 so and then chapman just made a show do you pick yeah, chapman and then you got it guys like um, andrew didn't get drafted yeah, He's Cha- gonna get chapman drafted. by the way would be another one i'd put on those young, young yeah. teams. Yeah. like i just yeah prather wasn't in the league last year so you got a you got yeah. a, a list Anthony, of guys that need to be in the league. I also wouldn't mind a team with like all guys that graduated from Wichita. <laughs> no. I know you guys hate that, but <laughs> no, but, but you know how they are. They, they're like you know like oh, man. some of the all time greats from Wichita. You know, put them together and yeah. you know if they don't yeah. win, you can rag on them. If they do win, you gotta listen to it all hey, year. Hey, you know what? We we're starting to be able to stack a little LU team out here. That's <laughs> yeah. Who do we got? Yeah, who would you have? Who What's the all time LU team? Let's go. Me, no, him, Vlina, Vlina's Vlina. not bowling. Vlina ain't on the all time. We don't have LU guys Shea, on tour. Shea Bidbender had to be on there, but he's not on a tour. Shea's I know. On. See, me, I him, would, and coffee. That's all we got. I thought there had to be someone else. Damn. I don't what? think there's anyone else. There is. Well, if you go back at all, I mean, you got what? You got Mike Dole, right? Dang. No. No. Christian. Christian. Oh, Christian. Yeah, you got Christian. Me, you, Christian, and Coffee. Yeah, Yeah. he's a Titleist. Yeah. And then let's just throw Shea on there because he's definitely the next best Lindenwood guy that's ever been. He's the hidden gem from Lindenwood. He is. is. No one knows how – except we know. Right. But no one knows how good that guy is. But, yeah, we're in this PBA league, especially Brad. So Brad's in the seat. And, you know, going into the playoffs here, which is another huge deal, top 24 we're trying to make. um, But he's sitting around 25th, 26th right now, right on the bubble. And then – now have to be in the top forty restricts a lot of you know someone's outside. Yeah, the top 40 so can't like pick. if you're if you're a manager and I'm twenty fifth in points and Chris Lowshader's fortieth in points, do you pick me or Chris Lowshader? Yeah, it, it depends on who the manager is. Yeah, like does. in my opinion, wherever he goes, you should be the last pick on that team. You think? Yeah, I think the only chance I have is Norm. <laughs> I think you got more chances than that. I think he could be grabbed up before Norm. See, I think he could be grabbed up. And then early. I think when they yeah. come back through and they're looking at the list, he uh, does, he wouldn't even say anything, but they'd just be like, Brad and Kyle, it just makes sense. Man, yeah. I want to bowl with Norm again. I really hope that doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> no offense to any. I'll bowl on any team, but God. But Norm, Norm's, the only, Norm's one of the only guys that are that is in charge of picking that. Doesn't necessarily care about titles. Doesn't necessarily care about like a whole lot of TV experience. He really cares about... About, um, that's one. That's, that's one not your, good. That's one of your cameras doing something. Sorry about that delay. What was I saying? Does anyone know what I was saying? All right, hold on. Let's uh, let's. We're we're transparent on this. We're still very amateurs in this <laughs> creating podcast. One of our SD cards just filled up a little bit. When something can go wrong, it will go wrong. That is, we have learned that. Oh yeah, big time. Oh yeah. And to those of you that are watching on CNSBC right now or something like that, CNBC. <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry for the technical difficulties. Oh, yeah. everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what I was talking about. I don't even remember. Well, what I was we talking. were just talking about you getting picked and whether you get picked. And I said I think you should be on uh, Kyle's the, team. Yeah, it just kind of seems like it just works. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. I don't know. I mean. We'll see. I mean, uh, we're both going to be there. Um, to hope for the best. Do you think? Do you think you guys are cursed by the number two? Because there's two of you. You finished second on a double show. You just finished second on a single show. Here's do you think thing. you guys are just owning number two no, forever? Dude, no. And it wasn't a thing <laughs> until you said it. It wasn't. I don't know. I don't win <laughs> tournaments. I am really good at finishing second, third, and fourth. It's not a matter of I don't try. I bowl good. I just and it's. I believe it's gonna come around. There's gonna be a time where then it's gonna just like come in a wave where I can just win a bunch of stuff. I've never won a big tournament before. I mean, I've won some regionals, which are kind of big, but other than that, 
You won collegiate nationals. Did team tournament though? I'm a great team player. We can I can bowl teams. I, I know. I love I love team bowling. I bowl team bowling every day over bowling singles. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've never really won too much. Singles are singles is harder. Singles is definitely harder to win. I think. Yeah, for some people, I don't think for I don't think everyone feels that way. Because you know you got guys like. Belmo and, e- Belmo and EJ. Belmo's won a lot more as a singles yeah, player than he has as a team player. They are the reason why it's harder to win singles tournaments. That's what I'm saying. It's not. I don't think it's for every. I mean, some people are okay, not for everybody. Some people and some people. I mean, we feel that way because we work really well in the team atmosphere. But some people are not good communicators and no, yeah. they just don't know how to bowl as a team. Right. There's a lot of people out there. Yeah, the PBA League is interesting. I I, I kind of hope people would talk about it, to be honest. There's just a lot going on. There's yeah. a lot of scenarios that could happen. Like, do you pick Pete? Do you keep this person? Do you do this? What yeah. kind of team do you look for here? What's this manager going to do? I think there could be a lot of press about it, to be honest. I do, too. I I, I believe, you know, right now it's, it's, it's not a PBA title. I think someday there needs to be something associated with a maybe i mean i would like to see a title out there or some kind of regard but it's tough i get it but we don't we guys take it very seriously but it's kind of like more of an event than a tournament you know yeah it's kind of you know there's a lot of um uh uh, just kind of a lot of build up to it and when you get there it just doesn't necessarily see like a fierce competition, which we all take it like that, but it's not doesn't have the same feel as like a US Open or a Masters or anything like that. I I would personally like to see them expand it a little bit, a couple more teams, get more guys in there. And they want that. They and want they that do. Too. It's just a matter of resources. But then, you know, take that to the next level because I don't know what it is, but that team atmosphere brings out more um energy from the fans than any other tournament. Oh yeah, that's great. I mean, the it's only time the I've on it, and not to not to be like narcissistic, the only time I've ever seen something close was the Cheetah Show the other night. Yeah, that was honestly one of the only times I've seen it because I mean is I've there, only been at Bayside once. Is but. there a difference between having bleachers down the side of the lane and then having everyone behind you? Um, actually, there is. I think a little bit. I when think you have, there is too. When you have people to the side of you, uh, it's a little like at the. Uh, at Bayside, when you're born on TV, you feel very enclosed. Like last night, there was like when I'm looking at the lanes, it's all open. I don't yeah. feel like that. Yeah. At Bayside, it's just like this. Almost, yeah, like, it was like Garth Brooks the other night. And what I mean by that is you're on stage and everybody's there to watch you. At like Bayside, because I've seen it. I haven't been there. I will be, but I feel like there, it's like it's like a a big party. And even though they're watching the bowl and they could, you know, be in to do whatever else yeah. they're doing. But at, at the way this was set up, I also feel like when it's down the lane, people are like, I can't move. I can't move. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it, it, I don't want to be distracting. Well, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Down the lane, when we when we bowled in Oklahoma, we practiced in the dark. You know, the entire bowling center is dark down there. The end. And then when you get to bowl, it's like you enter this arena that you weren't a part of beforehand. Whereas last night, I felt I was almost in the same arena as you, since it yeah, was right. like because mm-hmm. the arena was the entire place. Yeah. So the the down the lane thing really encloses that arena setting, and it, I don't know. There's probably some pros and cons to it, but I I would think that there's a difference if you're bowling in those two atmospheres. I thought it was really cool in this the arena that we bowl at Thunderbolt is like the balcony and the yeah, upstairs. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. cool that like you can like there's people up. On multiple very large. levels. Yeah, I have two yeah. observations about that place. Uh, number one, um, tonight, um, it was the first commercial break, and I'm like, okay, it's commercial. I'm going to go get a Red Bull from the bar because they have a bar in there with three bartenders. The line was like 60 people deep at the first commercial break. I'm like, oh, my God. I feel like I'm at a real sporting event. And yeah, you got to right? stand in line. I, so that was interesting. The second thing that was interesting to me was the big jumbotron. I felt like we were actually at a sporting event as well because of the huge jumbotron above the lanes. And I asked you this, but I think it'd be good for the podcast is, um, was that distracting to you bowling on TV with the shot of it, like huge above the lanes and you can see the reflection on the lane. 
Yeah, absolutely. The, the, yeah, it was not only the seeing that, like, because you see yourself moving as you're walking. It's like a mirror. Hard. Yeah, exactly. Then you have the glare of it coming down. Then you have this massive shadow of yourself on the lane um, with the backlights coming on you. So And blue oil. And blue oil. Like, I'm looking, trying to look at my target at the arrows, <laughs> and I'm, like, covering my eyes, like, there were, there were some times where I'm not going to lie, like my second or third step, <laughs> I caught myself like looking up at the jumbo I'm like, shit, let me look at my target real quick before I throw this ball. And you were flirting with the gutter the whole night. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I was trying to get it out there. So um, It's a wonder you didn't throw a freaking gutter ball, dude. It's, it's, a, pur- it's a purple urethane, bro. It's hooking it ain't before, going <laughs> it's hooking before it gets – it's got to be a bad <laughs> shot to get in. It's, <laughs> trust me. I was watching a few of those shows, a few of those shots on uh, the or, or vlog, and I wasn't being very accurate down lane. Have so. you watched the show back yet? No, I haven't. I'm I'm pretty. I haven't either. I'm pretty excited to do it. We filmed. We uh, we uh, recorded it back home. So. I didn't even know you shot 290. I didn't do like, I, like to me. You were just throwing shots. That was one improvement that the PVA could have made. There is that there should have been somewhere in that building a scoreboard. Scoreboard, yeah. You know, yes. I mean, it was no on the television screen, and I get why it wasn't there, but they should have had something in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Two ninety. I had no idea I was shooting two ninety. Me either. Like yeah, I was just because the ma- I knew the match was over. I was just throwing shots. Honestly, I kind of wanted to stop throwing shots because I didn't want to burn up my line. Yeah. Yeah, thought about too bad that. you can't do that. Yeah. I was like, I just can I just be done? Corey just sent me a text. He's here with this my video guy and our friend uh he says, Is it okay if I shower or is it too loud? <laughs> <laughs> I said shower, dude. Well, this we're is... wrapping this up. Yeah, let's we wrap need, this yeah, up. I have a couple things I want to plug. Okay. Yeah, okay. Plug yeah, go them. ahead, right. man. And you deserve it. So all right, yeah, right. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on here. And then I I can't believe I said that. Uh so um I I, I, I started a podcast in like I said with Doug in two thousand and ten. Uh, and then after two years of doing it, we just totally got away from doing it. It wasn't a priority and it was a pain. And then I decided, you know, podcasts are coming back or they're exploding actually. And I wanted to do one. So I announced like a year ago, I was going to do one. And then I started committing myself to some other projects and I just didn't feel right with the clients that I work with that I launched this thing until I complete some other projects. So I have actually five podcasts recorded, um, and I'm going to launch them God, I hope really, really soon. And I'm looking forward to doing my own podcast. So I just got to get the format right. But I've I've recorded five of them, and uh, hopefully people will download that when it becomes available. Yeah, when it, whenever it comes available, we'll just you know blast it to everybody. Yeah, we'll I it, appreciate put that. Put it in a vlog or something. Is that it? Uh, is that all you wanted to plug? Uh, what else you got? Get your merch out there. Come on, yeah. Insidebowling.com. Yeah, go to yeah, them. yeah. That's that's kind of like my Patreon, you know. Yeah. People supporting what I do, you know. The, we didn't even talk about the live streaming, but that's really what put me on the map. But yeah. I mean, I could live stream every weekend if I wanted to. I have that much demand for it, but it's just I don't want to be a weekend karaoke guy that goes around yeah. and sets up you know, my karaoke yeah. stage and has yeah. everybody take the mic and you know and that's and and I don't mean that just respectful to bowling tournaments but that's not a real future for right. me absolutely um, but I enjoy live streaming I'm actually flying to Dallas tomorrow to go stream a um collegiate tournament but so I try to do six or seven events a year but I don't know like the the live streaming part of things uh doesn't really pay a whole lot usually and uh, a couple of them pay a little bit more than others but uh by supporting the merch like I want to upgrade the the cameras and stuff, but I just can't justify putting that against my P and L statement right now when I need to upgrade other things and right. give employees raises or right. outfit them with a better computer or maybe pay their cell phone or their health insurance. So um the inside bowling store is really so that I can maybe potentially have some extra things to venture into to do more things. So Yeah, so go buy some merchandise. Yeah, you can even buy their shirts, too. I give them all the money from those, though, so buy a couple of mine, too. <laughs> Bowling World or something goofy like that. <laughs> Bowl Hub. Bowl Hub's Bowl my new one. matter of fact, you can yeah. find... That kind of fits my personality. Yeah. You can find all three of these. All on three? The you can. Yeah. yeah, that's one of our shirts. Columbia 300, uh, one of yours, and then uh, Bowling World. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, wrapping right, it up. Appreciate this, man. Yeah, uh, hopefully. I'm not saying we're scraping the bottom of the barrel. Yeah, well, you are. (laughs) No, no, this is good. This is great. I actually feel like sitting here with you guys, like, uh, you know, I want to do a podcast. I have some recorded. Mine's going to be a little different. You guys have your podcast. But we talk so damn much that, 
you know, I, I was listening to that Sweep the Rack podcast again to plug them for the fourth time on this podcast. But, yeah. um, you know, they do it all through the phone and they just talk to each other and like, and we've got to become such good friends. I, I just wonder if it doesn't just make more sense just to do something together. But I'm going to do my little thing. You guys got your thing going on. Yeah, we'll, we'll just yeah, figure hey, it out. We'll collaborate we'll all the time, man. Head to the ground and keep working. Plug in. Huh? Yeah. So, all right, we're done. All righty. Mike, thank you. Kyle. Appreciate it. Yep. See you. I, I don't. We don't have an ending yet. So, so here, I can help you with that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for tonight. We'd like to thank our guest, Mike Flanagan, for being here this evening. <laughs> don't forget to join us next time where we're going to sit down with another great guest. Make sure you check out our Patreon. You check out our whatever. And don't forget, uh, this podcast is available where all fine podcasts can be downloaded on XYZ, yep, right? And that's yep. That's how you end it. So well, you can it. tell who's done more Maybe live you can streaming than write us. that down. And <laughs> yeah, we're, the same we're, thing. we're still working out the kinks here. It's like that Casey Nice that where we're we're working on the uh, <laughs> what's it the Tech Tuesday intro. Yeah, the Tech Tuesday <laughs> intro. <laughs> we'll get there. All right, guys. See you later. Oh, <laughs> oh,